Imagine you're scrolling our science, a popular hub for science news on Reddit, and you come across an interesting article. You click the title, but before it sends you to the article itself, you get this page. So now what? You could click into the article itself, or you could just check out what the comments have to say. I mean, they're right there on the front page after all. Well, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about how reading these comments affects people's expectations of science news articles and their intentions to read those articles at all. User comments are generally meant to get people to engage with the news, and these discussions can affect what people ultimately take away from news articles. Given that so many people now get science news from social media platforms like Reddit, Twitter, or Facebook, it's important to understand how these comments can affect people's engagement with those articles. Now, the traditional flow looks something kind of like this, right, where people would read a news article and then join the comments directly below it in a typical news or blog format. However, social media sites flip this around, displaying the comments before people even click into the article. And recent research has found that our science users often read comments before the article itself. And this makes sense, right? You can see just how much of this page is taken up by user comments. In this set of studies, we explored how different types of comments can affect people's impressions of science news articles on social media. And to do this, we first needed to figure out what types of comments to explore. For our first study, we identified two dimensions that seem particularly relevant to science news. Uh, the first was difficulty, right? So we know that writing about science using lay language can be really challenging. Um, and as a result, comments on our science aren't always accessible to most people, right? Um, so we're curious, what effect do these difficult comments have on people's interest in reading the articles they're associated with? And our second dimension was valence. Right? Um, past research shows that negative comments can sway people's opinions about the news, and comments on our science are often really critical of the studies we're talking about. So what effect might this have? So for study one, we had a couple of competing hypotheses about difficulty. First, we know from past research that comments can provide heuristic signals about article quality in some cases, like how poorly argued comments can make people expect an article will be less important. This got us wondering whether a similarity heuristic might be at play here, where the qualities of a comment might signal whether the associated article will be of similar quality. Now, if this is the case, we would expect people who read difficult comments to show less interest in reading the associated article, assuming it might be harder to get through. To test this, we generated difficult comments about a then-recent air pollution study, which used lots of technical jargon and empirical arguments supported by various links. On the other hand, other research shows that people exposed to easy science news articles can become overconfident in their material. So if reading easy comments also leads to the same kind of overconfidence, people who read them might already feel like they get the gist of the study and no longer care about reading the article. And here's an example of an easy comment from our study, which had no technical jargon and used plain language causal arguments. In terms of valence, we know negative comments reduce people's opinions of articles, so we expected that people who read negative comments will be less interested in reading the linked article. To test this, our negative comments provided reasons why the study's method of estimating air pollution was pretty poor. On the other hand, past research is mixed on the effects of positive comments, right? so we wondered what effect uh, those might have on people's interest in reading. And our positive comments argued that the study's methods were instead pretty clever. So to test this, we recruited about 600 people from MTurk, assigned them to one of five conditions, including a no comment control, and asked how likely they would be to read the article in the link screenshot. In terms of results, this graph shows Bayesian and frequentist confidence intervals over the effect of each comment condition compared to the control. Overall, both difficult comments significantly reduced participants' interest in reading the article, while neither of the easy comments did. This supports our hypothesis that difficult comments reduce people's interest in reading scientific articles while rejecting the alternative hypothesis of an easiness effect. And there are no main effects of valence in this case. Overall, our results support the idea that reading difficult comments can reduce people's interest in reading the associated article. So could there be a similarity heuristic at play here? Well, to test that, we need to collect more data on participants' expectations of the articles themselves, as well as explore more comment dimensions to test how general such a heuristic might be. To do that, we used a few important dimensions people use when deciding to read the news, difficulty, information quality, and entertainment value. For study two, we generated a base comment, which was meant to reflect a typical R science comment. It was fairly technical, had some good information about the article, and was written in a straightforward manner. We then made three experimental comments to test against it, which varied along our three key dimensions. First, our easy comment was identical to the base comment, but contained no technical jargon. 
We expected that people who read this comment will expect the article itself to be easier to read, and that those same people will be more interested in reading the article. Our low quality comment had no real information about the study and just said this study was pretty good. Uh, obviously, this was also really easy to read, but we conducted some mediation analyses reported in the paper that show our experimental results were indeed driven by a lack of information and not its easiness in this case. Again, we expected that people who read this comment will expect the article to have less than useful information and will show less interest in reading the article. Finally, the entertaining comment was identical to the base comment, but had more exclamations and jokes. Again, we expected people who read this comment would expect the article to be more entertaining, again affecting their interest in reading it. For study two, we recruited about 400 people from MTurk, put them into one of our five conditions, again including a no comment control, and asked how difficult, entertaining, or informationally useful they expected the article to be, and how likely they would be to read it. On to our results, we found that participants who read our difficult comment expected the article itself to be significantly more difficult than those in the easy or control conditions, supporting our hypothesis about a similarity heuristic. Similarly, those who read the high quality comments expected the article to have greater information utility than those who read the low quality comment. Uh, now, unfortunately, I guess I'm not funny enough to write an entertaining comment and our manipulation check for that condition failed. Given that, I won't be presenting experimental results, uh, but we instead ran a regression predicting participants' expectations of the article's entertainment value from their ratings of the comments' entertainment values, identifying a positive relationship and somewhat supporting that hypothesis, uh, although these results are just correlational. In terms of participants' interest in reading the article itself, those who read the easy comment showed significantly more interest than those who read the difficult comment, somewhat replicating study one. Uh, however, there was no difference when looking at high versus low quality comments, failing to support that hypothesis. That said, we did find that participants' ratings of comment entertainment value significantly predicted their interest in reading the article. Finally, we conducted a path analysis to examine the relationship between comment variables, perceived article values, and likelihood to read it. As expected, the qualities of our comments were all significantly related to the same expected qualities for the article, indicating the use of similarity heuristic. However, while most of these variables significantly predicted interest in reading the article, the article's expected difficulty actually didn't. Instead, it was negatively related to information quality, causing an indirect effect on likelihood to read. This relationship is pretty well captured by a participant quote from one of our qualitative questions. The comment was too scientific and too wordy. It made me think that the article had too many scientific terms and that it would be confusing and hard to understand. So the comment made me not want to read the article initially. So what does this mean in practice? Well, imagine an R science user clicks an interesting study, but gets bombarded by confusing jargon. They may feel discouraged and decide not to read that study, regardless of its actual content. Worse still, someone could come across a low quality comment spreading scientific misinformation. Such a similarity heuristic could prompt them to skip the study, meaning that campaigns to discredit science could be particularly effective by using comments to negatively frame associated articles. To cap off with some design implications, right now our science has no guidelines for overly technical comments, but the results of our study suggest that platforms should encourage clear language free of difficult technical jargon. We could also imagine how automatic jargon detecting techniques could be used to prevent displaying difficult comments up front. And finally, are comments actually a good heuristic for article quality? Well, our study shows how comments can influence expectations of science articles regardless of what's actually in those articles. So instead, perhaps platforms could provide ways of giving more nuanced and explicit feedback about article qualities. For example, platforms could let you upvote or downvote articles on dimensions like their use of technical language, uh, the quality of information, uh, or their entertainment value. A system like this could, prove, uh, could provide a more accurate signal than relying on comments to make these judgments. Overall, we hope social media platforms consider the effects of comments on science news engagement that we've uncovered in this study. You can pause the video here to look through the references used, and thank you.